All right, uh, we're going to look at the new Grobato Vertex Map Output feature. Going to take a real quick look at things in Grobato and then move right on into Moto, um, where we will use some scripts to help us take advantage of these maps. Um, here's an extremely simple Grobato object consisting of two primitives, a hyper rod and a elongated ellipsoid. But they're similar in size and shape, so they create this uh, nice, subtle, elongated intersection between the two of them. And that will make our vertex map a more interesting and less trivial thing. Because these vertex maps are controlled by the boundaries of both the primitives themselves and uh, the seams of their, uh, that are created by their intersections. And we'll see that in just a moment. But there you can kind of get a, a look at the two primitives involved. So let's go ahead and uh, generate a mesh for this object. And I'll switch back to uh, one of the regular OpenGL modes. I've been playing around with the uh, vertex maps already, and you notice I'm using this output in normals option. That's the option you want to use specifically for Moto. Um, we'll get into these settings in a moment, these sliders. I'm not going to go into great detail there. That's covered nicely in a PDF document we have online. Uh, but you can notice that alert down there. It warns you that when you do this, you don't get regular normals. We kind of take over the normals to store this weight map or vertex map uh, information. So I've already hit the preview button there and you see the regular mesh, but now I'm switching the OpenGL display mode to vertex map. And there you have it, and uh, Moto users will find this uh, familiar. The intensity of that green represents the weights assigned to various vertices. Uh, right now it's set up to be zero on the seams and uh, transitioning to one elsewhere. And. Uh, just one reminder here, anytime you do play with the sliders here, you need to hit refresh in order to see the change. And you can see the gradient changing there as I push these sliders around. Again, uh, the details of what these sliders mean can be found online at the Grobato site on the downloads page. Um, I will uh, talk a little bit about this uh, offset from seam edge slider, the bottom slider that you see there. Um, it's kind of special. It, it can represent the offset, the starting point of the gradient relative to the number of rows that you have in your seam strip. Everything to the left of that little hash mark there represents rows of the seam strip. So if you want your gradient to start inside the seam strip, you need to move that slider to the left of that hash mark. And it will automatically adjust to accommodate the number of rows uh, available in your seam strip. Uh, once you start moving to the right of the hash mark, then you're getting the effect to start uh, well into the body of the patch. Now, of course, uh, once we get this fully integrated as a true plugin, you'll be able to send new vertex map data to Moto anytime you want. But for right now, uh, it's going to be whatever you set up with these sliders. It's going to be included in the OBJ that you export. The good news is there's a whole lot you can still do with that data once you have it uh, in Moto. So, there's the uh, export object button, which I'm going to hit here. You don't see it happen, but believe me, I did. And off we are in Moto, where I simply import the OBJ. And there you see it. Uh, it's right over here in the list. I'll go ahead and select it there. And uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that it's very dark. It's, uh, it's almost black. And that's because the OBJ surface normals have been hijacked to carry this weight data. But once I run this script, which is included in the script kit available uh, online, the new script that converts normals to weight maps. It's a trivial value there, that 1.0. You just leave it at 1.0 for now. It can be used to fade the map, essentially. But you notice that once I ran it, the uh, surface normals are gone. We threw them out because they're not worth anything as surface normals. And two weight maps were created. Um, that one and that one. And they're simply the inverse of one another. One uh, makes the seams immobile, sets their values to zero, uh, and negative values elsewhere. The other one sets the seam values to one and lesser values transitioning down to zero uh, everywhere else. Next, you're going to see me run this standard uh, GBOT prep for script, which really doesn't have any specific relevance here. It just sets up the Grobato model, any Grobato model for more editing options including turning on a Pixar subdivision. Uh, we just recommend you do it. it. It just makes everything nicer. So with that in place, we're, we're ready to start uh, trying out these new weight maps. 
So there I've selected one as my fall off and I've selected the global scale tool and off I go scaling and as you can see it's uh, anything but a trivial effect. Those vertex weights are having a dramatic effect on how the uh, various parts of the mesh scale. Among other things you'll notice of course that the seam that you can see there doesn't move at all. That's because we're using the version of the map that essentially masks out the seams. You can see their gray values representing zero weight. And, and by the way, um, the fact that the rest of it is negative is, is a little quirky. It means it kind of works in reverse of the way you push the tool, but I like it simply because it distinguishes it from the other map, and it uh, is easier to see. Those red colors are often, it's often difficult to tell uh, the, the true uh, values in the gradient. So, it can easily be switched around, but uh, I find no trouble working with it that way. So let's do something a little more interesting here. We're going to apply a rotation. Now you can see, there's, there you go. That's, that's a fine effect, but it's uh, really kind of out of control with what's happening up at the top there. Probably not anything you would desire. And that's, of course, because we are applying this rotation through that weight map to the entire object, to all vertices in this case. And you know, often you won't want to do that, and all of this really is based on patches. The weights themselves are based on patches, so it makes perfect sense that at times, certainly not required, but at times you will want to edit a, a single patch or some selection of patches. So here I've isolated a patch using the materials uh, select by part option that we've talked about often here. Um, or it could be a, a, a selection of vertices, as you see here, same thing. Just move the rotation center a bit there. And now, yeah, now you have something more useful going on. So that's a very nice form. Uh, of course, you can mix and match all you want. We're going to switch over to the scale tool and uh, narrow that and do a nice little knife edge. And again, you see the shapes are anything but trivial. You're getting that nice edge where the seam break is. And uh, all the vertices are moving at different rates, uh, dependent on the weight that's been assigned to them in that weight map. And what would otherwise be a, a trivial uniform uh, tool adjustment there with the translate tool. Okay, so now I've switched over to the other map, uh, the so-called invert map, inverse map. And you'll see now that it is the seams that are the most effective. See that more clearly if we spin around to this side. And there you see the seam. And as I apply this global scale, the seam is expanding faster than anything else. Again, very nice effect. Uh, completely in your control how dramatic that effect might be and how quickly it falls off away from the seam. All of that controlled, of course, by the settings you make with the sliders in Grabato. I'll also point out that when you are using this version of the map that moves the seams, you can put a lot of stress, a lot of movement on these seam rows. That's why it's a good idea to have a reasonable number of seam rows when you export from Grobato. There you can see this uh, different version of the vertex map with the highest intensity along the seams and fading away towards the center of the patch. Back to shaded mode here. So um, because of that stress that happens or that uh, large amount of movement that can happen on the seams, we can take advantage of that other script, which you've probably seen, has been around for a while, the one that simply creates a soft edge along any patch, a, a fall-off edge of its own. So what we're going to be doing here is running that script, which will create an entirely separate, unrelated, if you will, weight map, one that is simply one or solid in the center of the patch and creates a nice little gradient fall-off along the seam rows. Uh, this has been explained before in other videos, so I won't get into the details. We know we have a four-row seam, uh, so I'm setting it up for a four-row seam with a medium seam profile. And it will go off and do its thing. It actually also creates two maps, one being the patch you selected and one being everything but the patch you selected. And we can take a quick peek at those here. And you can see they look uh, fairly solid, and they are mostly solid. But we'll zoom in and you can see that indeed there's a nice little gradient right there along the edge, which can be used essentially to modulate or mask, if you will, the effects of the vertex maps we just exported from Grabato. Now a little side trip here. Here's that um, simpler vertex weight map 
being used for scaling. And you can see the difference. It still creates a nice effect along the seam. That's that uh, little seam gradient that I showed you. But the rest of the geometry remains uh, in its original form. It doesn't distort at all. It doesn't change in any, uh, any way other than scaling once you get outside of the seams, which, is, which in and of itself is a nice effect. And by the way, the two can be mixed to any degree simply by using the weight map tool that we're about to use for the most uh, straightforward purpose of masking that edge. So I'm going to create a new empty vertex map here. I'm going to call it Combo. You see it show up there. And then we're going to go off and, uh, well, here I'll show it to you. You can tell it's empty. Nothing in there. Uh, now we're going to go off and use the math tool. And uh, this tool is certainly beyond the scope of this video. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Here we're simply going to be multiplying two maps and sending them to this new combo map. So there's the combo. Uh, there's the imported map. And if you look at the settings, you can see it's set to multiply. There's the patch map that we just created with that second script. And there you can see the effect. That edge gradient has been applied and everything outside of the patch has been masked entirely. So we have the original imported weight map masked by that patch weight map. And if we set that up as our fall off, we can start to, for example, scale things. And you will see that there's an effect along the edge that's very nice and smooth. This, this uh, adding this patch map really ensures that and allows you to do dramatic things around, in and around seams. Uh, the fact that you have added extra seam rows with that script and that they have this gentle kind of S-curve fall off means that you can do just about anything you want and the results will always be smooth and clean. So it really opens up a whole new world of modeling. Uh, we're just beginning to discover what can be done ourselves. We will certainly be enhancing the kinds of maps you can export. And like I say, eventually folding them into a plugin so you can bring them in uh, dynamically. But right now, it's a real kick. Uh, I uh, have a lot of fun playing with it, and I hope you do as well.